Of all the movies I watched this month, A Nightmare on Elm Street is the only one I didn't like. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop the A from that since nobody ever calls it that because it's really awkward to say. Anyway, while it clearly took some inspiration from Halloween, which I reviewed last week and liked, it has too many flaws that break my suspension of disbelief, and some of the gory parts are just too over the top and unnecessary. First, things I did like. The concept was interesting and original, and the first half of the movie had some good scares. when Freddy starts to come out of the wall or everything from Tina in a bloody body bag calling to her and being dragged off by an invisible hand to Freddy scraping his nails on metal just as everyone had described dreaming about earlier. Nancy rigging her house for a physical battle is great, both as she's setting things up and then later watching Freddy get some of what's coming to him, which is immensely satisfying. The ominous flaming footprints are wonderful, and you don't know what to expect from Freddy in the real world, who should be just a regular guy, but he clearly isn't. I'm reluctantly going to admit that I like the driving reason behind the core plot. The justice system failed to convict him for murdering several children on a technicality, and their parents brutally killed him in retribution, leading to his current grotesque appearance and lust for revenge. The problem is the backstory is implemented terribly to the point where it actually made me angry. After Rod is hung in his cell, Nancy describes Freddy and her mom's solution is to have her get an EEG and monitor it as she sleeps. to keep her home for a few days until she really gets over the shock of this. I've got something better. I'm going to get her some help. When her nightmares start, the numbers go off the chart and the doctors wake her. She pulls out Freddy's hat, which has his name stitched into it or written into it with permanent marker by his mom. I don't know. The point is, it, it appears literally out of nowhere, and her mom pretends to throw it away after her stop at the liquor store. But that's just not reality, Nancy. It's real, Mama. Me that damn thing. It even has his name written in it. Fred Krueger, Mom. Fred Krueger. After fortifying the house because nothing's wrong, she decides it's time to, for her daughter to know the truth and shows Nancy Freddy's knife glove that she's been hiding in their basement wood stove. Maybe each parent has one of the incriminating pieces of evidence so that they can't rat each other out. I don't know, but it's a good thing the most convincing thing about Nancy's story is just sitting in their house. So why didn't her mother tell any of this earlier? Was it A, to protect her from the truth like she said, or B, she was in denial that he could still be out there in some form and able to hurt the kids, or C, so the movie could happen? The answer is C, the other two don't matter. Her mom knew what was going on the whole time and didn't say anything until Nancy literally pulled a hat out of nowhere. In fact, most of the second half of the movie is plot for plot's sake. Johnny Depp, you had one job. The TV and the stereo aren't keeping you awake? How? You only had to stay awake until midnight. Are you nine? Your 65-year-old parents Very are up important. later than you are. Give me that. Glenn's asleep. You'll have to talk to him tomorrow. You've just got to be firm with these kids. That's all. Let's go. Here's hard science proving you probably have a melatonin imbalance. Get your endocrinal system checked out. I do like that before he became useless, Johnny Depp talked about dream skills. He's the only one that, while he still had a nightmare about him, never directly faces Freddy in a dream until suddenly exploding, so maybe he knows more than he lets on. He also dies the most gruesome death. The idea about being in control of your dreams and turning your back to your nightmares to deny their existence, and therefore their power, is how Nancy eventually defeats Freddy. But didn't she already do this earlier and actually make him bolder? Does this only work if she knows about obscure Bellany's dream rituals? This is just a dream! This isn't real! This is just a dream! He isn't real! He isn't real! <laughs> This movie's full of plot holes, or at least it has no internal consistency. 
For example, Freddy walks right into Rod's cell through the bars, but spends the entire movie chasing people but getting hindered by closed or locked doors. What about the scene where Freddy stretches out the wall? Nancy wakes up halfway through his attempt to scare the audience. Was that a part of Tina's dream or that he was just randomly doing? Or does this mean that Freddy can just wander into real life whenever? We know his hat came into the real world, but then he still has it the next time she sees him. I guess you can wave that away as dream logic, just like a lot of the nightmare stuff, especially as check this out, self-mutilation. The only real explanation is that the whole movie was a dream and none of it needs to be internally consistent, so shut up. Personally, I'm going to chalk that up to being a poor attempt at one of those horror sequel hooks where they have to show the villain still alive so that they can make more if it's successful. The last scene basically retcons the whole movie into never have happened in real time. I know they have to do it because of money, but this is ridiculous. If you watch my review of Halloween, this is the opposite of everything I liked about that movie's ending. Where Halloween felt wrong but believable, with the last shot being the sound of heavy breathing through a mask and the camera lingering on the decrepit old house before cutting to black. Nightmare on Elm Street is just cartoonish. Nancy's mom gets dragged through a comically small window and Franny turns into their car and drives them into a wall or off a cliff or something. It's just cheap and not something I could take seriously at all. That said, while the Inception ending would explain all the plot holes, I'm not going to accept it as a valid reason for most of the movie to not make sense. Despite all that, it was interesting enough to keep my attention. Would I watch it again for fun and not to remember what happened to write a script or a video? No. Twice is enough and I really don't care about what had happened with the Freddy Mobile and anyone inside. Nancy had the most screen time and she still didn't have much of a character here except her trap setting skills and the one who figured out what was going on. Like with Halloween, I had to look up all the characters' names because they were all generic Gen X and beyond suburban blobs in my mind. The only one with any real character was Rod, the bad boy. You could tell who he was just from his clothes, and he was the only one who didn't just go with the flow of the conversation. Sorry Johnny Depp, your career isn't there yet. I just hope this doesn't traumatize you in some weird way. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, like this video, subscribe for more, and most importantly, share it. If you like Nightmare on Elm Street, and I'm sure there's no minority out there, leave a comment. I can definitely be convinced to watch more of them if you're persuasive enough. Next week, Horror Month comes to a close with my personal favorite of the bunch, Scream. Finally, most of my videos this month are going to get copyright claimed and I won't make a cent from them. Horror Month is my favorite thing to do each year, but I also sometimes don't make a cent from doing it. Please consider donating to my Subscribe Star Monthly or my Patreon for video. Depending on your tier, you can get access to a Discord server, behind the scenes content, and early access to a bunch of original videos before I try to deal with the copyright situations and edit a bunch of stuff out. And of course, your name in the credits right here. Every dollar helps, so please consider it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.